decided to record my recent rendering of Wei Hua. Now this involves some new techniques I've not covered in previous videos. Wei Hua was a two-spirit Zuni artist who lived in the mid to late 19th century. I was working off this portrait of her when I drew out my design. Later I regretted this as I wanted to recreate some of the Zuni hairstyles that she's seen wearing in other photos, but that would have meant changing the face shape so it was a bit too late. Next time maybe. As always, I begin with the black outline starting from the facial features. Well, first of all, can I just say that the quality of this thread is absolutely brilliant. I love it. Like, I just got so much detail out of that. I don't know if it's changed from the last time I bought it. Let's see. Like, what brand this even is. Okay, so this is uh, Trimits 100% cotton. Fast colour. Okay, so now I have a name and brand loyalty which I never thought I would have in my life <laughs> yeah when I first started like really really embroidering all the time um, I didn't get a lot of detail out of stuff 
because I was just using whatever black was around and it tended to be quite loose and fluffy whereas this especially when you split it down it's really like it's it's not fluffy it's very sharp it's like dry and more stiff so this one is definitely much better for getting details just like look how clear cut that is this is amazing i love it so much so um yeah i mean i, I usually save fluffy black stuff for like, if i need to stitch in clothes or hair and stuff like that but for the outline i always prefer to use like stiff cotton like that Then there follows the arduous task of filling in the skin tone. Right now I'm really trying to work out what is on the shirt here. Shirt or dress, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so we have the polka dot pattern and then we've got these big things and I can't tell if they're like some kind of button or something that's been stitched on or a bead or if they're actually part of the print. So I can't see. Uh, I mean, sometimes they look like buttons that have been stitched on in the middle. Sometimes they look like beads and sometimes, like here, you can see it looks like it's bending with the print, but I'm not sure. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I am going to do it, like I'll, I'll stitch in the polka dot and then I'll like sew this on as a bead. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Just so that it adds a bit of variety to the surface maybe. Yeah, I think that'll work.
So today I'm weaving this cloak. I'm not sure what its name is. If anyone knows, let me know. Sunlight, sunlight, go away. <sighs> this is another thing. You always should try and keep your embroidery pieces and embroidery threads out of direct sunlight because otherwise sunlight bleaches all the thread and it loses its colour. To create the woven texture you start by stitching lines of thread from one side of each section to the other opposite in the direction of the pattern till the whole section is full. After that is in place, you get more thread and weave it through the base strands. So that's the first main section of the cloak and I usually do this for anything that needs to look woven or woolen. Someone one time actually suggested I actually try knitting but with my sewing needles and I like tried it for about 10 minutes and then just laughed and gave up because <laughs> I cannot knit at all let alone with little sewing needles and embroidery floss but um yeah so i, I think this works well I've, I've done it on another couple of ones where i've needed to create like a cardigan look so yeah it just makes that woven texture and it's feels really nice i don't know if you can see the texture actually but yeah there you go
was originally going to weave the pattern into here, as I've been doing. But it turns out weaving on this small scale, especially when it's already sewn into this, is actually really, really difficult. So I think I'm just going to stick to finishing weaving the base colours and then I'm actually going to stitch in the pattern up here. Which is one of the good things about doing a weaving pattern as well, is that you can just always sew in, like if you see any spaces or anything like that, you can just sew it in. It's always best to sew in the embroidery thread in the direction of the weave so it looks like it's part of the fabric rather than just embroidered in. I fell in love with the necklace that she's wearing in the source image and was determined to somehow create it. So a quick Google of Zuni historical jewellery shows up this. So this is like modern interpretation of it I guess. Um, there it shows the same like almost horseshoe shape there. In this other photo of a Zuni girl, we have the same kind of shape there. It seems like it's a common thing, but I just don't have a meaning for it yet. Here there's this picture of a Navajo silversmith, it says, and again, we have the same thing here. So it must have been common like throughout the Pueblo regions. Yeah, so this is like a really common piece of jewellery. I'd love to know what it is. So the word squash blossom has been coming up as I've been scrolling. It looks like the entire necklace is called squash blossom. At first I was thinking it was probably just the actual turquoise what is inserted into some of them but um, yeah, apparently all of these necklaces are known as squash blossom irrespective of if they've got turquoise in them or not and um, yeah, apparently putting the turquoise or whatever stones in them wasn't popular in the early days but then later on it just became the common feature. Um, yeah so this would be silver yeah, so, so it looks like this is just going to be all plain silver. So that's something very enlightening. Mm -mm. I like these little hands. I really like them. I have no idea how the hell I'm going to be able to do them so small, but... <sighs> now these bits I'm going to assume are silver as well, because from the other pictures the whole thing seems to be silver or stones. And they look like like crosses and crucifixes all like in a row. So I don't know how I'm gonna do them. Apparently this horseshoe shape is called a Naja. Naja? Correct me if I'm wrong in that pronunciation. Yeah, I, I may actually do this with one of the sequins, one of the big ones, I may have to cut this out, which is going to be really difficult and very fiddly, but I think that's the best we can do.
What has been good about this series is how I'm constantly having to research and look into dress history and cultural historical facts, so this piece was one that has taught me a lot. Again, I think it looks nothing like Weiwa, but at least I learnt some stuff. There's that if nothing else. <laughs>